the arithmetic first. All right. If you guys remember when I taught, before I get to this, let's realize what we need to do here. If I'm trying to add fractions and they have different denominators, I got to get common denominators, right? So I would multi I'd multiply by 3 over 3 plus 4 over 4, which would give me 9 over 12 plus 16 over 12, which is 25 over 12. Right? OK. So if I can't combine, now first of all, I see these co-function identities. So I'm going to convert this to tangent of theta plus cotangent of theta. Now, I can't combine these together. But I could rewrite them as fractions and try to see if I can get common denominators. So if I rewrote them as fractions, I would get sine of theta over cosine of theta plus cosine of theta over sine of theta. Yes? Now, just like I did over here, if I need to get common denominators, all I need to do then is multiply this. The common denominator would be sine of theta times cosine of theta, just basically the product. OK. So when I multiply, sine of theta times sine of theta is sine squared of theta. Plus cosine times cosine is cosine squared of theta. And now I can just write them under the same common denominator, which is sine of theta times cosine of theta. Now, we haven't gone into this next set of identities, but can we simplify this a little bit further? Well, you can't really do anything with sine times cosine. But what about the sine squared and the cosine squared? It's equal to 1. It's a Pythagorean identity, right? So I can just rewrite this as 1 over sine of theta, cosine of theta. And can't now I simplify that even further? 1 over sine is cosecant. 1 over cosine is secant. OK, guys, we do not have a lot of time. But if anybody